Uh, good evening and, and welcome to Canvas. I, I, I hope you've had a, a good look around and you've asked lots of questions and you're getting a better feel about, about what Canvas is all about. And I'd like to reinforce some of that and talk about why for so many years Catmus has been so heavily oversubscribed and what makes us such a special school that is so popular. For some, it's the facilities. And of course, you're, you're sat in our, in our purpose-built theatre and you will have been round and seen the computers. You'll have hopefully seen some of the amazing science labs. I hope you did think they were amazing because I got to design them as a physics teacher. And it's not often in your career you get those sort of opportunities. Um, but I did get this opportunity to help design this building that, w that we call Catmus College. And we're very lucky to have such great facilities, not just inside, but outside. You know, the footage on the top is taken from a, st a student, Sam, who on sports day, instead of being part of the co competition, the competitors, he um, took photos for me and got part of the tech team that did all the scoring. And this is one of the shots he grabbed of the entire campus, which I thought I'd share, because it just shows how extensive our facilities are, from the athletics track over on the far side to the full-size astro pitch, the tennis courts, the eight courts that make up our sports centre. There's a swimming pool that you can just about see. And there's actually another sports centre that's off, um, off camera that we get to use, mainly for exams. But we have access to all of these facilities throughout the year. And in fact, as I say, this was taken on sports day where we had all of our students out and involved in sports, doing everything from athletics events to tag competitions, dodgeball, and then culminating in the whole school getting together for the finals of the tug of war. A great afternoon at the college. And for me, um, the facilities are important, but actually the way that the building works is even more so. You know, if you've been round, you'll have noticed, hopefully, that the corridors are probably about the double the width of what you'd find in most secondary schools. There aren't any dead ends or the need for one-way systems. As a head, I can head up to the library, which, of course, is lovely and open. They invite students to come in and use it and look round and see half the school at a glance. Within half an hour, I can go around every area. And every area has its own facilities, so you'll have seen the study areas, you'll have seen the printers that students can use. And it's those hidden aspects that you may not notice that actually really contribute to what makes Catmus so special. And I mentioned that I got to help and design this building. And what is unique about it, even amongst new builds, is that we started with our values and designed a school that works around what Catmus thinks is important. I went to a secondary school in Liverpool in the 80s, and it was very different to the college. When the bell went at the end of the lesson, the teachers escorted us out of the classroom, but they didn't stop there. They took us outside, and then they locked the door, and we were left outside on the fields. Now, you can imagine what the in a week, if you think about the weather this week, what that could be like. The teachers, of course, disappeared into a nice staff room and had a cup of tea. I always said, when I became head, that I would run my school in a completely different way to all of that. We trust our students. They can come and join me from eight in the morning, and many do. When I arrive at half seven, quarter to eight, there are already students wanting to come into the building and start using our facilities. And when they come in, there aren't any locked doors. You can use any of the computers, any of the classrooms, any of the facilities, actually. You know, quite often, I will hear students in the music practice rooms. And that's all very much part of our ethos and values. And when you walk around, you'll have noticed lockers. Every student has a locker. What always strikes me is how few of them have padlocks on. Because actually, students trust each other here, just as we trust them. And we invest in our students in that way. I really like this photograph. I took this um, around Remembrance last November. This is out by Oakham Castle. And some of you Year Sixers um, were part of this, because you would have made a poppy. And that project started by one of my art technicians. 
and supported by the college. I think we fired over 10,000 of these poppies. The student council, photographed here, helped raise those funds to support that community art project. And actually, the, the aspect of it behind them here is now a permanent memorial at the back of the college. When you look at those students, of course, I've talked about a very modern school where students are trusted and that it's student-centred. But in other ways, we are very traditional. Students wear a smart uniform. If you've been had a tour from a year 11, you'll have noticed all of the badges they wear. These badges aren't just given or bought, they're earned. Perhaps by joining a sports team, perhaps by being part of a show, perhaps by being commended by a member of staff, or they come and meet me to show an excellent piece of work. But each of those badges has a story behind them that says something about who they are and what they've accomplished as a student at Catmus. And they wear them with a sense of pride. Because like most teenagers, they don't like bragging about what they've been up to, but they do want people to notice, and the badges are a great way to do that. As well as work in lessons, we also want our students to leave here with those other skills around teamwork and leadership and resilience and that grit and determination. You can't teach that in a lesson. That's why those broader opportunities that you'll have heard about this evening are so critical. We also expect our students to behave well. We want students who are hardworking, who want to do their best, and want to seize every opportunity that comes their way. And our staff lead by example. They dress smartly, they don't shout at our students, and if you go into one of our catering facilities, you'll see our staff join the back of the queue and queue with the, queue with the students. Just as we, we want them to behave in a civilised way, we do the same. And of course, there's no staff room. Our staff buy into our ethos that we work together as a community and we all benefit from that. Our staff are exceptional. We have subject specialists in every area. Every member of our staff is a qualified teacher with a subject specialist. That's Andrew Ward, our head of maths, helping a student. Our staff go the extra mile. If a student is struggling, they'll find the time to do that bit of one-to-one -one support if that's what's needed. They'll provide those wider opportunities outside of the classroom to really engage and get, in, get involved in the subject. An example of that is um, Science Week last, last year. We, we do Science Week every year and we, we, we mix it up a little bit. And last year they did trips to, I think, the Leicester Space Centre. Well, they went to see um, Walsall Manor where Newton was born. We had guest speakers in. In the past we've had a huge tent in here where you can go inside and see what the night sky is like and learn about the night sky. And so I was a little disappointed when um, Rob Curley, one of my chemistry teachers, came to see me and said, as a culmination of Science Week, I'm going to do a lecture to the whole school, 900 of them. I'm going to have them all on the heller up, and it's going to be amazing. I said, Rob, it's not. It's going to be boring. <laughs> However, he insisted. And this was the result. Three, two, one. So that at the end was 10,000 ping pong balls, which took the rest of the day to pick up. No one was bored, but I can't pretend I was impressed. It was quite amazing. Um, and of course, it wasn't just that 20 second clip. This was 30 minutes of amazing science punctuated by experiments that, like that that engaged and got students interested. And that's what school is like at Catmus. It's exciting, it's engaging, it's where you want to be. This is the prom photo. Because if I ask students why they like Catmus and why they'd recommend it to a friend, they talk about their friends. They talk about their team, who they work with, the experiences they've shared, and the way that they come together as a team and as a community, and no better example of it than the prom. If any of you have been to a Catmus prom event, it is quite something. And of course, those who are looking at that photo will notice that the girls, not one of them has the same dress on, of course. 
Every single one is unique. And of course, they've started, no doubt, some of the year 11s already deciding what dress they're going to be wearing in the summer. And actually, although they're a bit quieter about it, I'll bet some of the lads have as well. Well, they're probably ties, not dresses. But that is also reflective of Katniss, in that we see every single one of our students as individuals. Individuals that have unique skills and talents and experiences. And we see it as our job to tease them out so that they can do their best. So that when they leave us, as these Year 11s have, they're really ready for their next steps. Not just in terms of the academic sense, but in terms of those wider skills. Particularly around teamwork, leadership and resilience. And I said earlier, you can't teach that. You have to experience it. And that's why we provide so many different wider opportunities. For some of our students, it's through performance. We have about 20%, 25% of our students learning a musical instrument. Many of them join ensembles and get involved in productions and performances. You know, the next one coming up is our Christmas concert. We will pack out the local church and you'll hear our choir singing. You'll hear the ensemble groups playing. And then we put on these big shows. When I say big, I don't, I'm not exaggerating. There's hundreds of students involved. Some of them are front and like the acting and the singing. Others are doing the lights and the sound. Others are dancers and they do the choreography with other students and get the dancing right. And then, of course, behind the staging is a live band. We don't do karaoke at Katmus, we do it West End style. And, of course, it takes practice and hard work. You, our next show, Mary Poppins, the practice has already started for when we do it later in the year. Because our students know it takes hard work to get up to this sort of standard. <laughs> Now, some of you may have um, recognised one of our casts, because Phoebe, who was in the um, chorus, she was on um, The Voice last year on TV Live. Um, got near to the finals. An exceptional singer. And she discovered her talent partly as a result of Katmus and the first show she ever did in Year 7. And so some people will leave here and go on to the West End. Others, of course, will pick up those skills and transfer them to whatever job or career they end up in because they are really transferable skills. But of course, for some students, performance is not their thing. Perhaps it's sport. And that photograph at the top, which I took, was tricky. I had to get a really big wide angle lens to fit everybody on, because there's around 300 students. About a third of the college take part in sport here. And we offer around 20 different sports. And so you'll find students doing badminton, rowing, cross country, athletics rounders, football, rugby, you name it. And the list keeps on growing. I've agreed this year to fund a gymnastics team and we'll have a hockey team up and running. It is getting a little embarrassing. If you look back over the last six years, it's always Katniss at the top. We compete against the local six schools and this year we're nearly 100 points clear of our nearest competitor. I don't really want to talk about the other Rutland schools. But, of course, losing is great as well. You learn an awful lot from losing, don't you? You've got to pick yourself up again. Go back, practice again, work with your coach to make the best of your team. And that is very true of Katmus. We're not a team of individuals. We've got some great individual players. But when we come together as a team, we're really unbeatable. And we don't rest on our laurels. We may have cracked the local competition, but now we're entering our strongest teams into national competitions. So our netballers have started that process this week. And then we'll continue when the athletic season starts. But maybe performance isn't your thing and sport isn't your thing. Maybe one of the electives that we offer on a Wednesday could be it. And here we offer things that 
Other eyes are not possible very easily in a school. Learn to ski. Go ice skating. Learn to do archery. Maybe go horse riding. Or throw a pot on a pottery wheel. Learn to make jewellery. Or perhaps join me on an elective. I'm going to help out with one around Iceland, because I'm going in February to Iceland with a group of photography students. And we'll be in here one week, all the lights out, completely pitch black, and we'll be doing night photography and getting used to it, so that when we go out to Iceland, we're ready to photograph the Northern Lights, hopefully. And we do that, a number of these electives are based around those residentials. And talking of residentials, we only offer one or two. Well, maybe a few more than that. And some of these are really local, where they might go along to Oakham Castle, or in Year 7 you might go to John Clare's house, he's a famous author from the area. You might go over to Peter and Magistrate's Court if you're interested in the law and how that works. And some, as you can see, are a bit further afield. Now, hopefully, as Year 6, you're a bit excited. Moving up to big school, lots of great opportunities, lots of things that you're dying to get involved with. But I'll also bet you're a little nervous. Who wouldn't be? You'll be coming, from, no doubt, from a quite a small primary and coming to this huge, big place. Don't worry, we'll look after you. You've seen how welcoming our school is and how the older students look after the younger students. But transition for us starts the moment you've successfully applied for a place. We'll work with your head teacher and your year six teacher to find out more about you to make sure that the transition and the transition day that we offer works really well. And that if you need a bit of extra support, you may get the extra day or an extra few days. Or you may come over and see our drama group perform. Or you may come over to use some of our facilities. So that by the time you arrive in September, you'll know your new tutor group. You'll have got to know loads of staff. And you'll know your way around the place. The transition for us doesn't stop there. The whole of Year 7 is transition for us. When I spoke to the Year 7s earlier, they said one of the best things has been they don't have to do all of the prep in the first term. They only get prep in their English, maths and science subjects so that they can ease their way in. They spend every Wednesday afternoon for the first term with their tutor doing team games and quizzes and getting to know each other really well. This photograph was only taken, I think, last week. This is the Bushcraft Residential, um, which Year 7 had already been on. And as you can see, they had to go at building a shelter in the woods. They learned how to light a fire. I hear the Bush Tucker trial was a mixed success. Salmon eyes, anyone? Apparently they're not as bad as they look. Better fried. There was even a plane crash, allegedly where they had to use their first aid skills to resuscitate some teachers. And for those students who didn't quite get their um, bushcraft quite right and their shelter was a bit risky, there were also some lovely teepees to sleep in as well. And there was even, a, miraculously, a, a, a clay oven where they could bake pizza. Um, and last week, uh, or sorry, this week, I think, they went off to Burley House, um, only local in Stanford as part of their arts curriculum and did some work around the sculptures over there. That young lady was at the weekend on Saturday. She's already in our cross-country team, along with a load of other Catma students, and I think probably some year sixes from the number of people I saw out, out there at Presswood House. Um, it competed as part of our varsity team already. One of my favourite things, however, is represented by that photo at the top of those students singing. Um, because every year we choose a musical, a West End musical, um, to go and see. And so these guys went to go and see Matilda in London. And they don't get just to go and see the show. After the show, they work with the actors in workshops. And when they come back to the college, their music and drama lessons are about putting on the show. And each tutor group takes a scene from the show and then performs it to you. And this is what it looks like. It's quite impressive. <laughs> deliberately show the heller up with, uh, with parents, of course, because transition isn't just difficult for the students. It's also difficult for you as parents. 
because your children will gradually transform from being the lovely young individuals they are now to those teenagers that are more inclined to grunt at you than speak to you. And so it's important that we get you to come in and see what they're really up to in college, and these are great opportunities to do so. There was a young man who you may have seen playing the piano, and his mum had come along with his youngest um, sister, and because um, he, he wouldn't play at home. And yet he's playing such wonderful piano pieces. And so we will find those opportunities where you can come in and just see how wonderful your child is, even if they don't talk to you quite so often at home. Our exam results. You know, these are this year's exam results. I've, I've, I've shown them all, actually. I'm a great believer in transparency and, and, and sharing everything. Um, but if you look back over the last 10 years, this is not a surprising set. This is just one of 10 sets of very strong, exceptional exam results. We are proudly a comprehensive. We take students of every ability and they contribute to our community. The progress they make, however, puts us, we think, probably this year in the top 10% of all schools, whether they are selective or not. And, but if you looked back over the last few governments where they change how they measure us, it doesn't matter how we've been measured. We always come in the top 10 or 15%. And the reason for that are all the things I've talked about with about our ethos and our values and the way that students are part of their own journey. And the same is true of their examination results. We work really hard with students to get them on the right courses. We never choose courses that are just good for league tables. We only choose courses that are good for students. I've been horrified to read in the, in the press about schools who are gaming these sorts of systems where they're choosing easy courses that people can pass dead easy which improves their performance on here, but doesn't actually lead anywhere. Our students, if they're good at computer science, will do a computer science GCSE, where they'll learn to properly program. And it means that they can then progress to A-level and then on to university. We offer physics, chemistry, and biology sciences. They may be harder than some of the other options, but they're the right option for students who are going to be real scientists and are going to progress. And the results speak for themselves. <coughs> Not just the progress, but the attainment. You know, if you looked at our most able cohort, which would be the sort of students who might be in a selective or grammar school provision, they're outperforming. They're outperforming the grammar schools, the selectives, and the independents. You know, about 30 of our students left here predominantly with only A's and A stars, the new seven to nine grades. We're also in a very fortunate position to have great links with Harrington School next door, which is part of our trust and we work really closely with, and Katma students have priority admission to there. So that if the A-levels are the right next step for them, it's an easy transition again. But A-levels aren't for everybody. That's why we employ a careers advisor. That's why we have strong links with local employers. That's why we invite local employers and uh, organisations like the police, the army, um, apprenticeship organisations, local colleges. So for those students who A-levels are not their next step, they also are well supported into that journey. So let me welcome Ben and Annabelle, who are going to talk about their own personal experience and the journey they've been on at Catmus. So if you would, a warm round of applause. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We are here today to talk about our own personal experiences so that you may have a glimpse into what your life could be like here at Catmus. I am Ben Tylko and I am the head student. And I am Annabelle Studdick Kennedy and I am head girl. One thing which I was desperate to talk about when I first knew I'd be encouraging students to attend Catmus was my adventure to Nepal. Anyone who knows me knows that I always manage to weave Nepal into any and every conversation due to how life-changing it was. This wasn't just a trip that was funded by our parents. We had to raise the money ourselves. This was in the spirit of benevolence, something the trip represented from start to finish. The trip itself was a defining experience at my life at Katmus. It was a two-week trip where we helped rebuild a school as part of our community project and then toured across <coughs> Nepal. 
taking part in whitewater rafting, a safari and other activities. I thoroughly enjoyed my time out there, the rush of adventure and forming a family-like bond with my team. But the best part was how it changed me for the better. Being welcomed into a community where many were in extreme poverty helped me to realise how lucky we are back home, but also that you truly can be happy even if you have little. Once upon a time, I was a plucky, sporty of six, ready to move into a school at least three times bigger than any primary school I knew of. It seemed a little daunting. I pictured myself back then with a map and compass, trying to figure out whether I should be heading on a northwest or southeast bearing to reach my intended destination of Shakespeare. William Shakespeare, the man, I thought to myself. Now, even with my very limited knowledge of history back then, I was pretty sure he was dead. So, as you can imagine, learning I had a class with him was a bit of a surprise. However, after quickly learning that this was not, in fact, a teacher, but a classroom named after the man, I soon learned to find my way around. The new classes exhilarating, the new teachers educating, the new friends exciting. Yet, I can't say my first week went perfectly smoothly. As I've already touched on, I'm the kind of kid to try any sport. The variety at Catmus made me very happy, but obviously eager to try more, I decided to go skateboarding outside of school. Fair enough, you might say. Your parents probably aren't thinking that. As some of the smarter of you might have figured, this isn't the best idea when you have no idea how to skateboard. So yeah, I broke my leg one week into year seven. Missing that first cross country season was probably more painful than actually breaking my leg. However, as my ever optimistic self would point out, going around with a massive red plaster cast on your leg does have some benefits. It's a surefire way to get teachers to remember your name, in addition to rides in the lift, shared charitably with friends. Ben may have, from the start, considered himself the next Mo Farah. However, my year seven self saw herself as the next Taylor Swift. I didn't exactly have a passion for sport. However, thanks to support from my peers and our dedicated sport teachers, I've now been involved in many sport teams and have developed a passion for taking part in our varsity competitions. The number of sports open to girls has grown immensely over the past couple of years and now ranges from rounders to rugby. I've been a member of the girls' rugby team for the past two years and recently competed in our first competition, something I never thought I would have done when I first came to Catmus. The Taylor Swift to me never faded. Music is still a huge part of my life at Catmus. I regularly attend chamber choir, something I enjoy, thanks to the variety of songs we sing and the companionship being part of a choir provides. I'm also part of the orchestra, playing the cello, something many people find surprising. Maybe it's because it's nearly double the size of me. <laughs> the opportunities over to musicians at Catmus are endless. For example, in Year 8, I went to the Royal Albert Hall and performed with choirs from across the country. There is also the Music Scholarship Programme. Having gained a Silver Scholarship, I've been able to experience trips such as watching an opera, and I also have discounts on my in-school piano lessons. Outside of college, I compete in a lot of sailing and triathlon competitions, and these gave me the exciting opportunity to get a sports scholarship. This has led to some of my favourite moments at the college, from specialised training to a talk from the founder of the Premier League, even lessons from a former Olympic badminton player. Inside of the college, I have also found my way into lots of competitions and challenges. After missing a considerable amount of time at school after being ill, I was excited to jump back into a tent. So I did. Youth Speaks was my first elective, and I worked hard to create a speech I could deliver to an audience, which I went on to do in multiple assemblies and competitions. Next term came around, and I didn't even have to look at the electives booklet. Ever since Year 7, there has been one thing I've always wanted to do, the Duke of Edinburgh's award. Learning a new skill, cooking, for me, and our expeditions were my personal highlights. I remember the sense of independence and freedom, camping, walking along our route, and finding our way to our destination gave, along with the immense sense of achievement. 52 kilometres in three days isn't half bad, and sure was a lot of fun. Another opportunity available is the Academic Scholarship Programme. Ben and I are both academic scholars. I have been a Maths Academic Scholar for one year, and this has offered me extra classes focusing on A-level work, 
which has allowed me to fulfil my full potential at GCSEs. In addition, some of us have also had the exciting opportunity to write research projects for St Catherine's College, Cambridge University. This year, I wrote mine about the psychology of ambition. In Year 9, I wrote mine about the effect playing a musical instrument has on behaviour. And this year, I wrote mine on the nature-nurture argument, as like Ben, I have an interest in psychology. Later this year, we will be going to St Catherine's College to discuss our research with the academics and learn about the process of applying for an <coughs> Oxford University. The Academic Scholarship Programme helps you build a range of skills through trips, such as visiting museums and my favourite one this year to the escape rooms in Leicester. What I have learnt and who I have met have been my personal highlights. And if I were to leave you with one message to take advantage of this great school, I would leave you with this that the former Olympic badminton player, Anthony Clark, told me. He said something to me that changed my way of thinking about what's important in school and life in general. He said, take advantage of opportunities that are given to you. We think, whether it be for our electives, scholarships or adventures like Nepal, see I told you I always managed to link things back to Nepal, Catmus gives you a lot of truly amazing opportunities, which for Ben and I, have turned into great and life-changing experiences. Because at the end of the day, it's our experiences that make us who we are. Thank you very much for listening. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Annabelle. How do I follow that? Well, <laughs> toilet. Toilets are one of those things people don't talk about, and yet they're so critically important, aren't they? And I show a toilet because I think I talked about how difficult students sometimes find transition, and of course there's some horror stories about secondary school toilets, aren't there? Your parents can probably tell you some. Not a Catmus. Um, these loos um, were chosen and designed by the student council. I took them to London. And we gave them a catalogue and lots of different options when we were working with the architects. They, of course, chose the most expensive. These did used to feature in four-star hotels. And, of course, the other things the students wanted, quite rightly, was privacy. So each of our loos are individual. There are no big toilet blocks. They're all individual. They're all private. Very safe. Students, however, still were not happy. Hence why we have mirrors in every toilet because a Catmus student can't go anywhere until they've got their hair right. <coughs> but seriously, um, choosing secondary schools is really tricky, isn't it? And the BBC um, share this advice, uh, which I, I copied and pasted last week, about the eight things they advise parents to do. So well done. You've listened to your head teacher's speech. Um, you've brought your child, hopefully. We've shown you the toilet. But if you've not seen one, pop along and have a look. Um, you've hopefully um, quizzed those hand-picked students that showed you round. Alas, they're not hand-picked. We just asked any student who would like to, to come back tonight. And the fact that all of Year 7, more or less, and all of Year 11 volunteered their time tells you something about our community. I'm going to skirt over question 5 and those tough questions. Um, but if after you've listened to me you do have any questions, genuinely, come and have a chat at, at the end. I'll be more than happy to try and help. Take a good look at teachers. I go one step further, talk to them, ask them questions, talk about their subject, talk about what they do to support students, talk about those trips and visits. Golden, I think, is number seven. I used to do this as an Ofsted inspector. Hang round at the end of the school day. Nothing like seeing how students leave to tell you a lot about a school. Although, of course, at Catmus, not everyone leaves. You'd probably have to come in and see them working because many students stay on till five and then somebody like me has to persuade them to go home to their parents. Finally, number eight. Really, really important people. The deadline, 31st of October. And there will be somebody in this audience who gets it wrong. Quite often, it's sadly either a member of staff or somebody who attends Catmus Primary or lives very local to us who forget that they need to put an application and they think it's automatic, you must apply by the 31st of October to your home local authority for us to be able to consider you for a place. 
I said at the beginning we, we've been oversubscribed for about the last decade. I, I would anticipate, given the turnout tonight, that is also likely. Um, but it's worth trying if this is where you want your child to be. Um, when you apply for a school place, you should rank schools in the order you want your child to attend. No school gets told what rank they, that you have been given. Um, but if you don't put us first and another school and you and this is where you want your child to go, then the chances are you wouldn't obviously get a place because we are likely to be oversubscribed. If, however, there's another school that you prefer, then you should put them first. You should put it in the order that you want. The other piece of advice I would give is what some parents have done in the past is only put Catmus College down, thinking that would improve their chances. It doesn't. It just means you may not end up with any school place. If you're not successful, all hope is not lost. We do operate a waiting list, and there is some movement. Uh, we have a military base at Kendrew Barracks. We have a large number of students who come from the military base and other people who move jobs. And so quite often there is some movement towards the end of the summer. And so if you're on the waiting list, there is still a chance you could gain a place um, later on if you're not successful in the first round. But of course, I can't guarantee that. So let me finish with a cute photo, or I think it is anyway. I am a biased. This is the very first photo I showed as a new principal about 11 or 12 years ago, I forget which. Uh, and this is my um, daughter, Laura. And you'll know it's Laura because, like me, she was born with a frown, which has never gone away. Um, I'm not allowed to show the latest photo because, of course, she's a student at the college and she would be deeply embarrassed. And so I've had to resort to a baby photo. But what I said though, in that first speech over a decade ago now still holds true, is I want to run a school that I would be proud for my own child to attend. And the reason for that is if what we are doing here isn't good enough for my own children, how would it be good enough for any of yours? And that is how I make every single decision in this place. Laura remains my touchstone because I want to offer the very best school for everybody's children. Thank you for listening.